Hello, yes, Stuart here again. I found a collection on eBay. Let's have a look. Let's have a look and assess this collection to see if it's worth it. And just for the entertainment of it, it's worth looking at. So vinyl job lot, thousands, classical violin, cello, orchestral, ASD, SAX, SXL, mint rare. Let's look at that title. <clears throat> Very clever title. Thousands, okay. Violin, cello. Anybody who's in this uh, business knows that violin and cello are the most sought after classical records by certain performers. They're the ones that are worth the most money. So that's clever. Orchestral. Yep. I mean, organ, opera, um, you know, harpsichord, uh, uh, miscellaneous instrumental like flute, harp, etc. I mean, all that stuff is just uh, nobody really wants to pay big money for that sort of repertoire. ASD, SAX, SXL. So those are the three prefixes which collectors are generally looking for when it comes to audiophile records. Mint Rare. Okay, good title. Promises a lot, but what does it deliver? 4,500 or best offer. Wow, that is a big price. It's almost enough to bankrupt somebody. So let's see what he says about his collection. Item description, vinyl job lot, thousands, etc., etc., Audio files, cherished classical LP collection, fairest price on eBay, Discogs, you name it. Super low price per LP. Well, that depends on how many there are. Um, how many are there? Okay, well, let's, let's, let's just keep reading. You can see detailed description on LPs in my eBay shop. It's getting time to retire. Unrepeatable offer. Most of my LPs are in absolute mint condition. Fair enough. Classical vinyl, etc., etc. Many hundreds of once played and meticulously organized with well over 1500 hours worth of high quality vintage recordings. Well, let's say one hour per LP. So that wouldn't make thousands though, would it? That would make like 800, 900 records. Um, okay, Lyrita, RCA, DGM includes many super rare records that do not exist anywhere on the internet. That's a big claim. I doubt very much whether that is true. Meticulously cared for. Okay, several thousand LPs. All right, so let's say there's 3,000. Majority of which are retail secondhand. Well, if you sell them for 4,500, that then works out at what? Uh, one pound, um, one pound 50 a piece, something like that. Condition mostly mint, near mint. Oh yeah, 2,500 in total. All right, so we're looking on getting on for two pounds a record. That's actually a lot. I've looked after this collection very well. Rather than selling to super greedy dealers for one pound per LP, I'd much rather give them to a charity shop. Well, that's stupid. Is he saying that rather than getting, say, I don't know, say a thousand pounds for the cream of what he's got, he'd rather give them away to a charity shop for nothing? I don't believe that's the case, but it doesn't matter. Okay, here is a total bargain. All right, so he's talked it up a lot. Let's see the reality. Let's have a look. So let's go through them. First of all, let's enlarge the page. Now, I guess he's really showed a selection of the best rather than all of them. Let's start with the first picture. What I would be looking for in this kind of picture is the performer, the label and the record number. So here he's done OK. Let's go through them. So we've got SXLP. That's a concert classic. Uh, we've got Beethoven Violin Concerto, Milstein. That looks good, but it's music for pleasure. That's no good. We've got Dupre, Cello Concerto. All right, that's, that's a good record, but is it mono, is stereo? Doesn't say, does it? Because you can't see the prefix. You can't see the label. That's a GBL. That's a Philips mono, so that's not going to be any good. Then we've got some menu and ASDs. They don't sell. They're not worth anything. We've got a Carrion. No, that won't sell. I mean, you know, when I say that doesn't sell, I just mean no particular value. Thousands of people are selling them for peanuts and... They're not records I would probably want to even put on my website unless I was selling them for like two, three pounds and the labor's not worth it. Souk, Beethoven Violin Concerto, no, rubbish. Uh, Tortelier, uh, no, Tortelier is not really collectible. Sansons, a couple of ASDs, they're not really worth much. Brahms, Viol uh, Milstein, a couple of Milsteins, but they're both monos, that's no good. Milstein's only worth money if it's stereo. Perlman, ASD, no. No, Sonata for Violin, e Musicae, no, no good. Kyung Wa Chung, all right, what's that? Salty, 
looks like a digital record. Yeah, that's Bergen, Bartok, Violin, and Richard. Okay, I mean, that's the first one I've seen that I wouldn't mind having. I'd probably, I'd probably put a twenty pound, twenty five pound price tag on that, even though it's digital. Okay, uh, Tchaikovsky violin concerto sharing, but it's mono, so that's going to be no good. Bartok sonatina, oh, that's super fun, so that's no good. Uh, you know, when I say no good, I don't mean no good to listen to. I'm talking about purely financial here because I would listen to a lot of these. Okay, uh, DG David and Eagle, uh, not impressed, not impressed. Where are all these super rare records? Vorjak, Ormandy, nope. CBS, no. Brahms, double concerto, no, no. Um, still not seen anything interesting yet. I know, I'll start going through them. Furtwängler, Schneiderhan, Beethoven concerto, yeah, but that's mono. That's not going to be worth anything. String quartet, Bush, that's on CBS, no. Uh, Mils uh, Grumio, Mozart, yeah, but it's mono. No, the mono performances don't fetch anything. Symphony Española, Sigan, that's Previn, nope, no, Mendelssohn, Brook, Perlman, no, Brahms, Violin Concerto, probably Perlman, yeah, that's for Perlman, um, no, so I'm not really impressed with anything there, no, okay, let's move on, Nil Nathan Bilstein Conductors, I'm not sure what that is, is that a box set or something, anyway, uh, Brook and Mendelssohn Violin Concertos, uh, now this is where the silly fool has not uh, shown the prefixes. He's not shown the record label number. So, I mean, how do we know what they are? Tchaikovsky, Lalo, Oystrak, Oystrak, no. Oystrak's only uh, worth money if we're talking about SAX. Um, Beethoven, Chrysler, no, forget it. Uh, Zimmerman, Vi um, Lautenbacher, no. Triple Concerto, Oystrak, no, no. Courteau, as a historical performance, no. Forget about historical performances. They don't fetch money. Uh, Brook, Romaster to Violin, uh, what's that? That's probably Grumio, but I can't see the record. It doesn't make any difference. Furtwängler, Menuhin, no, that's not worth anything. Brahms, Symphony Number no. 1, sure, no. You know, even on, I mean, even on the basis of what I've seen so far, I'm very depressed about all this. All right, Ace of Diamonds. Well, forget it, Ace of Diamonds, you know, um, they won't sell. You know, they're not really, I mean, you know, they're good records, but they're just not worth anything. There are too many of them around, so forget about those. Okay, now this is a bit more interesting. We got the Brahms uh, Symphonies 1 to 4 with Kubelik. I can see it's Kubelik, but again, he's not put down the, their SXLs. He's not showing the prefixes. But the jackets look kind of dirty-ish, unless they're LXTs. I mean, they're interesting if they're all SXLs and early 2000 editions. You know, that's the first that I've been impressed with. Beethoven Symphony Number no. 9, no, Answer May, not really. Well, you know, they're not really, uh, that's not really very collectible. These look like all SXLs, possibly. Marvel Last, uh, I don't know what that is. That that jacket looks too good to be an SXL. It looks probably more like an Ace of Diamonds. Strauss, uh, VPO, uh, Borodin String Quartets, that would be interesting if it's a wide band groove. Um, Schubert Symphony number no. nine. Not sure what performance that is, um, but anyway, I'm not terribly impressed with these. If that's the best that there is so far, the 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 Kubelik's look interesting, but the jackets look dirty. Oh, I see. He's showing the other side here, but he's still not showing the uh, record numbers. Look at the top right-hand corner. You can see Ace, Ace of Diamonds, Ace of Diamonds. No, forget it. I don't know. I don't think he's not going to be able to sell these. Ace of Diamonds, Ace of Diamonds. No. Um, looking over at the other side, I don't know what these are. Again, they could be Ace of Diamonds. Probably a lot of them are. Some of them might be SXLs, but I've not seen anything really impressive like Schubert Symphony 9 with Kertes on an SXL 2000, which, you know, could be worth three, four hundred pounds to pay for some of the, frankly, uh, you know, uh, bread and butter records that he's got. Um, here we are. Okay, more Decker. But um, Beethoven, Debussy, French Overtures, no, still not impressed. Yeah, they are Ace of Diamonds. Problem with Ace of Diamonds is, I mean, they're considered to be mid-price label. And, you know, they're just not really worth anything. They're good records. I mean, I listen to them for my own listening pleasure, but they're too common to pay money for. Look at all these Ace of Diamonds. God, what a depressing collection. It, you know, if I travel the distance to see these, I'd be very depressed. Honestly, I mean, what I've seen so far, if he's got two and a half thousand records, pfft, honestly, with the bulk of 
with it with the sheer bulk of having to move that yeah with the with the bulk i mean i've got an estate car and i wouldn't be able to get two and a half thousand records into my estate car i'd almost need to charge him to take these away that's the truth of it there are just so many uh, i mean I'd only be wanting to pay a few hundred for this lot. I'm not joking. He's got four and a, he's got two and a half thousand records there. He wants four and a half thousand pounds. And my assessment as a dealer on this collection is, um, I mean, I would go in actually, and I wouldn't offer anything. I would just say, thanks a lot. Um, I'll keep it in mind. And I would just disappear because this guy is not going to sell his best records, which are not that impressive. I mentioned those Kubelik's. I'd only want to pay a tenner each for those. As for the rest of them, there are records here and there I'd probably pay £10 for, but I very much doubt whether I'd get to two or 300 for all the ones I want. So to take this lot off him, everything, uh, I mean, I'd have to have contacts overseas that are prepared to buy records in bulk off me for a pound each, which I've had in the past, but and I did get rid of thousands by that means. But I've lost touch with all my contacts since that time, so I wouldn't I wouldn't have the possibility to sell most of this stuff, which is why I just very selectively buy. Yeah, so I mean, maybe I'll report back on whether he actually manages to sell them. He's on auction, but he's not going to get. He's also got best offer. If I was offering for this, I'd offer two hundred pounds for the whole lot, but I wouldn't offer anything for it really. So there we are. It's a dead loss. It looks to me like he's probably sold off the best ones. Another cherry pick collection because he's just not really got anything interesting for a collection of two and a half thousand. I, I would expect there to be something a bit more, a bit more tasty and interesting here, but uh, there isn't. <clears throat> so there it is. No, no sale. Not worth buying almost at any price. Okay, that's my opinion. It's just, that's my opinion. Others may disagree. If you've got a record shop with a lot of space, then this kind of collection could suit you. But I still wouldn't pay that much for it. I'd only want, if I had a record shop and I needed to fill the shelves, I'd only give 500 for this collection. I wouldn't give, uh, I wouldn't give it four and a half thousand that he's asking. Okay, that's all. Bye.